Welcome back guys, this is Rob with Tech. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create the Unify controller. Um, if you use this one, the Linux server Unify controller, this image is going to be depreciated on January 1st of this year, 2024. So now the one that you need to use is the Unify network application. Uh, here I already have it open. Uh, this is the new one that is going to take over the Unify controller. Um, in this case, what happens is that you need to set up the MongoDB on a separate instance within its own container um, so now it's no longer going to support it being part of the same container uh, so here we have a little information about the container uh, so what's important about the database is that the mongodb has to be 3.6 through 4.4 i know here it says that there's some newer ones that might work but those are not supported so for this demonstration and the way that i did it for my example is I'm currently using MongoDB 4.4. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip all of this. I mean, you can read all of this if you want, but I'll go ahead and explain the Docker Compose files as I have already created the Unify application. And I also created the one for the, for the database using Mongo. So we'll just jump back into Open Media Vault. So here um, we have Docker Compose. I'm just going to do Add. And I'm just going to call it Unify Controller or Network. I mean, whatever name you want to use. I'm just going to call it the same as what it, it's called. Then here, description. I'll just specify what it is. All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and copy all the file. I'll explain it to you all. So here I just added this comments on here and it's just to uh, explain how the application, like usually when you want to update your containers, you just shut them off and then you'd pull the new image. And since we use the latest tag that automatically creates the, it pulls a new image and it will update your container. But in this case, we cannot be doing that to MongoDB as it's not supported. And that's why we're tagging uh, MongoDB 4.4. So, by to start off we're using we're, we're declaring or creating the unified network application so this is uh, the one this one we can update we can pull an update so that's why we're using the unify network application latest container name we we'll just did the same container name as the title uh, you can name it whatever you want now on depends on unify db this is important Depending on how you name the container for your database, this is where you're going to put it here. Um, so like in this case, I'm going to change it. So let's just call it um, U Unify YouTube Database. I'll call it like that just so we know what we're working with. So you can keep track of the variables. Basically, it's just telling it that this container needs to rely on Unify YT database. Well, you know what? That's uh, too complicated of a name. I'll just leave it how I had it. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll just try to explain it. So the environment, this is the UID and GID of whatever account you're using. This is like for me on this containers, I use the app user that I created on the Open Media Vault. And I know that... On my case, well, you know what? I actually need to check on this machine. So if you want to check, you can just go to SSH root at and then the IP address of your open media vault. And then you're just going to do ID app user. And it'll give you like, let's say you're using another username. Just replace app user with that username. And this will give you the UID. In this case, it's a thousand for UID and a hundred for GID. So I'll just go ahead and, and do that. All right. So now we have uh, your time zone. So we uh, work in Chicago. Now, this is very important. Uh, and I, na I labeled it like this DB user. So this is going to be the username that you want to use uh, to connect to the database. 
So in this case, I'm going to use Unify. Like my username to access the database is going to be Unify. Now this is the database password. Um, I'm just going to use uh, password for this example. These are variables that only they only get used in the beginning. They once you run this container once, you can remove those values. But I'm not suggesting to put just password as your password. But for this example, that's what I'm going to use in my my username is Unify. And my password for the database is password. Now host, this is what whatever we name the Mongo host, the Mongo container host, is that's that's what we have to put here. In this case, we already started with depends on unify db. So that's what I'm gonna label the container. So I'm gonna do unify dash db. Now Mongo db name. This is the database name. So I'm gonna call it unify dash db so i know it gets a little confusing because this is the database and then this is just calling a container um so just keep that in mind so now th none of this stuff this is just authenticating to the actual mongodb so this doesn't create the database um just fyi so we're still gonna later on we right here on the bottom we have the mongodb and we have to use the same variables that we used here for user username password and uh, host and database. Now for volumes, um, I started using this change to compose data underscore path, and then you can just create uh, add the folder that you want, and this would automatically add or create the folders and install the the Docker containers for such config into this directory. Now, if you need to know where you I'm pulling this from. Um, I could save this real quick. So this could change to compose data path. If you go here to services, I mean, not service, compose settings, you have this data. So whatever share folder you assign it here uh, by you using change to compose data underscore path, like all of this, you can just copy it straight from here. It will automatically throw things into this app data folder. And of course, this app data folder is set up under storage. And then share folders and here i have this app data so it's under this one is linked here in this drive as app data um that's where i'm getting that from it's a lot easier to manage because you don't have to be putting all the srv path that we usually do uh, so you can just do change to compose data path and then you can just add from here just specify the container name and it will automatically create those folders for you so that's the only thing that we need to do for the Unify controller. This is the actual Unify controller. Now, for the ports, it just depends what I'm, what you're using. Um, I only use the default ports, and all of the ones here are labeled optional. If you want to know what those do, uh, they're on the Docker Hub site. They'll tell you there's a chart that tells you what, what all these ports are used for. And then the restart, uh, colon, unless stop. This is just to make sure that if something happens to the container or you shut down the system, it automatically restarts. Now, this is important because this is the creation of the database. So now we have here Unify DB. So th this is like the name that depends on. That's where this is pulling on. Depends on is it's going to go here to make sure those are matching. Depends on. Is matching with what you have here, Unified DB. Now you're gonna pull Docker.io for slash Mongo colon 4.4. This is like you specifying like this is considered a, a tagged version. So whenever we run the container, is gonna pull version 4.4 or Mongo version 4.4. If you wanted to use a different version, you can change it here. It, uh, as part of the notes, it's like it's not recommended to use the latest because you're going to break the database every time that you pull the new container. Now here, container name. I'm just going to do the same thing as unify-db. Because remember, by using unify-db, that's how you're going to connect to that Mongo database. So if you look here, Mongo underscore host is unify-db. That's how that is connecting. So if you have a different name, for the container, you need to specify that different name here. Um, so that's where that's coming from. 
now that's all you have to do for for this compose file for Mongo. But you still have to initialize the first parameters of of the MongoDB. So if you look here, I'm also using also the change to compose data path, and I just added right this path, even though it doesn't exist. Like I said, it would automatically get created. But one thing that we do need to create is this int dash mongo dot js. So for this instant, we need to SSH into your into your machine, and then you have to go ahead and create that path manually or that file manually. Um, so I'm gonna do cd srv dev. And I think it's right here. Compose app data. Okay, it's actually app data. So CD app data. So here in app data, because remember we're using change to compose data path, and that that path for me is linked to the app data. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this int dash mongo.js file here. So in this case, since we're connected as a root, we don't have to use sudo now. If you're using another user, then you might need to run sudo command. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to do vim, then int, like in it dash mongo dot js. Then you're going to open that. Now here they have, if you go back to uh, the site, they have this part here. Oh, let me put this to the side. This part here that if you're using the the you, when you create the int mongo.js, uh, you have to run this. Just this just creates the user for you. But this was a little. Uh, you can use this one as well. That's the same thing. I'm gonna copy it from from my files, but uh, it's the same thing that is there. Okay, so here we're just gonna do i for insert, and then I'm just gonna. It doesn't let me uh, do the right click, so I'm gonna do Control V. So it just depends on, on, on your console. I don't know why this one does this uh, sometimes. So we have the same command that is here on top. So now it's important to remember here the database name. Remember that we, we have to use the same thing that we specified on our Docker Compose. So we go back to Docker Compose and, and we look at, we can actually use this one for reference. Um, so it's asking us, right, uh, what is the database name? And if you look at what we specified here, just do the I or insert so you can edit. And then here you're going to do unify-db. This would be the, the Mongo underscore db name. Now create users is going to be user for the database authentication. In this case, we said that we were going to use, uh, or I was going to use unify for this example. Password here, so you just, I use password. So if you use something else, let's go ahead and, and specify that. Now here it's important to leave underscore stat there because if you don't if you don't leave underscore stat, it's not gonna work. So this is also the database names. It's just gonna be unify dash db underscore stat. Now that's all you do for this string. You can just do escape and then shift colon. So you have to specify colon. And then WQ and then enter. So we do an LS, we can see that the int dash mongo.js is right there. All right, so we're going to go back to the compose. And then we're going to save. Well, before we do that, let me just make sure everything looks good. Okay, it looks good. So if everything checks out, we should have the mongo and the unified controller created. So I'm going to go ahead and do a check just to make sure we don't have any errors. And there's no errors, which is good. Uh, let me do the up. So the reason that we are creating the container or both containers together is because the, why, the problem in opening media vault and the Docker compose plugin is whenever you run a container by itself and you don't specify a network, it creates a bridge network for it. And if you create the Mongo on a different file, and then you create the Unify Network application on a different Compose file, you create two different networks. So you'll have the Unify controller that won't be able to connect to the MongoDB. So 
that's one of the issues that kind of I could never figure it out, but I was able to make it work on, on Ubuntu. And, and after doing some ping tests, I was able to identify that issue. And by us creating the container, the Unify application together with the Mongo, the Unify, the Docker Compose plugin creates the both containers and then it adds some to the same network. So now we can actually access that database. It looks like it finished. Now we go to the IP 10.0.0.156, but this would be the server, the one that you are on. And you do 8443. It's going to specify that we need to do HTTPS, so we can just do the forward. HTTPS colon forward slash. We do the advance, continue. And there you have it, guys. That's all that there is to it. It's just, uh, and just whenever you want to update it, like if you were running the old controller, uh, make sure you just, uh, do a backup file and then just go ahead and click here, restore server from a backup. And then you can just proceed like, like normal. Um, in the case that you want to update it, I mean, it won't, this won't affect it because usually the way that you update containers is you do down. That turns off both containers, the Mongo and the Unify controller or the network application. And then you can still do a pull. This will pull the latest image only for you Unify because remember that we tagged the MongoDB. So you can still update it as normal as long as you use the tag on Mongo. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to update it once we there's a different Mongo. I think it would be easier to just create that backup file and then just go ahead and restore. But uh, once I get to 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 do that well then i'll create another video if it was difficult to do uh, but i guess for for depend like since the backups and restores are super easy it might just be a better issue to i mean it'd be easier if we just handle it like that so i'll go ahead and uh, start it back up and you see that everything is working again i'll go ahead and refresh it's just loading the container it takes a little while there you go. That'll be all for this video. If you guys like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you click that bell icon so you can get notifications whenever I do postings. If you guys have uh, any video ideas, I mean, go ahead and drop them down in the comments. I mean, I'm open for video ideas. Uh, so that'll be all for this one.